On this week's episode, I'm joined by another rugby legend, slightly taller than his brother, who was previously on another podcast episode, Gonzalo Uva. Gonzalo was one of Portugal's first players to play rugby professionally. He represented Portugal in their first ever Rugby World Cup in France in 2007 and represented Portugal over 100 times. We discuss, amongst other things, how he got into rugby in a mostly football-obsessed country, what he loves about the sport, what he remembers about the incredible achievements of the Portuguese rugby team in 2007, and why he loves living the simple life right here in Portugal. For those of you listening, head over to our YouTube channel to watch some of this episode. And for those of you watching, click down below and subscribe. And for the full podcast episode, go to Stitcher, Google, Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcasts. And now over to my conversation with Gonzalo. Welcome back or welcome to another episode of Portugal, The Simple Life. And it's a real honor to be joined by another rugby legend that uh, that's that's graced the podcast and probably the tallest guy that we've ever had on the podcast as well Gonzalo uh, thank you for being on the podcast how are you ah thanks Dylan it's a massive pleasure to be here uh, obviously uh, my brother being the oldest one and uh, pretty much I'm the second one to be here the second rugby player but it's just an honor to be amongst some uh, other uh, people that were here invited uh, it's uh, it's great, and um, I'm doing fine, doing great. Good. Uh, just uh, enjoying enjoying the simple life here in, in in Lisbon. What were those things, Gonzalo, about the game that that grabbed you? Uh, that that made you just yeah, you never look back. What what were those uh, things? I think one of the, one of the things was the 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 camaraderie. Camaraderie. How do you say the camaraderie? Yeah. Camaraderie. Yeah. Uh, it was it was it was amazing to see. Uh, how well I got accepted in a group of young guys and young players uh, that just got me, saw me for the first time, and and uh, because I was there for rugby, they just welcomed like uh, uh, like probably at the time I was I wasn't uh, uh, welcomed uh, in other sports, and I and I remember I used to play tennis, and being tennis uh, uh, an individual sport. Uh, it was so good to 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 get into practice and and be with so many so many so many other players with the same passion. Uh, obviously, just the, the passion just started was a, was a, a, a love at first sight the rugby, and then so the the, the love the, the the friendships uh, the the respect and everything every uh, other value that I that I that I learned uh, in in the, in that time just uh, just made me uh, fall in love uh, with uh, with the sport. How many, um, by the time you played professionally, how many games had you played for Portugal? Uh, I would or say, less. yeah, it wasn't, uh, I, I should have been around, because I was, uh, I should have been around 15, 15 okay. test matches, uh, okay. I would say. Because uh, okay. after that Barbarians game, um, it was quite early, but I, I got to, I got to play a year, I barely, I barely played. So I was, I was coach, I was training, but I barely played. And the following year, I played, I think every every match. So I would say, yeah, around ten to fifty games. Okay. Ten to fifteen games, uh, and yeah, in um, in two thousand and seven. Tell us about that um, that World Cup, Gonzalo. Uh, for people listening, it was the first time that Portugal ever played in a Rugby World Cup in two thousand and seven. And it was a majority amateur team as well, which was also completely unique. All the other teams were pretty much professional. Um, tell us about, yeah, just what you remember, the no, memories. I remember, I, remember, I remember it all. I remember since yeah. the qualification, how, how we managed, because it was, it was really tough. We qualified by one point uh, losing. So, so we won in Portugal for seven, by, by seven, and then we lost in Uruguay for, by, by six. So the, 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 the smallest margin, the smallest margin uh, to qualify. And uh, the preparation after that, the, 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 the qualifying was great. Um, Tomas chose a group of 40 players that I think that will never forget each other uh, because the things that we, we, we live together uh, and obviously the ups and downs, the, the guys that uh, weren't picked because uh, it's, it's, um, it's tough, it's tough on them, but uh, we then play the World Cup for them as well. Uh, and then I remember the place where we stayed, a small place, a small village, Chambon-sur-Lignon. Um, didn't have much, but uh, 
we're just we're just in a bubble, uh, and and it was great. First game uh, we played against Scotland, we had like we had an, an hour and a half bus drive, and uh, half an hour before we get to the stadium, we we start having the slight understanding of the support that we were gonna get, because we start seeing Portuguese flags, we start seeing Portuguese Portuguese um, uh, fans uh, driving with us in the car, and then. And then, and then when we got to the stadium and, and to the to the to the whereabouts of the stadium, we realized that pretty much every person in the stadium was Portuguese or, or, or was supporting by us, and, and the stadium was full was 40, 40, 35 to forty thousand uh, wow. uh, spectators, and I would say eighty percent was was Portuguese, and it was everyone cheering was it was just amazing. We're gonna stay we're gonna stay at the World Cup a little bit. Let's just keep the the good memories going um, because there's a few things. Um, but what I wanted to ask you, you must have known that the stadium was, was mostly Portuguese because of the way the fans sang as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And then, and the flags again. And, and uh, we heard uh, a few um, uh, Scottish uh, singings and, and it was amazing. because It's we a beautiful respect- anthem as well. Beautiful anthem as well. Sc- Scotland is probably uh, the home nation of rugby. So it's, how important is that as well to be there? And, uh, and, uh, and 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 make history by playing Scotland. It was just it was just amazing. And uh, and uh, yeah. and, uh, and even if the the, the the stadium was wasn't full of Portuguese people, because it was played in France and in France as a big uh, Portuguese community, maybe yeah. second second and third generations that yeah. barely speak Portuguese. But the fact they were there and supporting this in in, in green and and in uh, and red. It was, it was just it was amazing. It was a, it was a, it was the best feeling uh, in sports that I ever that I, I ever had. Your brother got got man in the ma- of the match in that game. He he made. I remember I, was, I, I talked to him about this in the episode we did together two years ago. Um, he made something like twenty three tackles in that game or something. And when I asked him about it, he said, "I only remember the tackle that I missed." <laughs> exactly, but that, that's something that I'm. We uh, as um, growing up and obviously being playing a lot with my brother, we we would um, we would only count the ones that we missed. And at the end at the end of the game, we'd go to 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 to, to one another and say, "How many did you miss?" I said, "Miss one, I uh, missed none." Or the the other way around. So you had a little and, competition uh, going. A little competition going that made us grow, and um, we, we couldn't care less about the ball. And uh, we would like obviously it's good to have them in the hands, but being a forward and don't don't touching yeah, cool. that, that much, we, we think that we we our game was the the, the defense and and being aggressive and we loved it. One more rugby thing, um, Gonzalo. So you're also one of the Centurions. So we've got two brothers Centurions in in Portugal. You and your brother, the only ones I think until now to ever play a hundred caps for Portugal. And yeah, uh, until now, yeah. Hopefully we have. Uh, Hopefully we have more because it's it's such a such a great achievement that uh, it would be great to have more. It would, it would be great uh, to welcome another Portuguese into the club, which is something that um, we we honor uh, represent and we represent our country in in, in that uh, in that club, and it's great because we get the chance to to tell our story to put port, the Portuguese rugby in the map. Where do you? I mean, what what do you see in the difference in the in the game now to to when you were playing? To well, let's say to, between yeah. now between the two two World Cups, two thousand seven and I think, well, obviously a lot, a lot of things have changed. The 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 pace of the pace the pace of um, the pace of the game just increasingly uh, increased tremendously. Um, the the accuracy the 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 I would say the the um, the time that you play it's it's it's, it's unbelievable the, the quickness it's it's much faster it's harder every a lot a lot of things have changed and uh, I'm really glad that we that we that we qualified because I think that mm. uh, we've showed the world um, our passion we've showed um, we showed that we we can definitely do something and we can be competitive you know for you. Um... You know, you played professional rugby. It's super, super time-consuming. You've come back. You now are in a, you know, in the in the business world. I mean, 
the downtime that you have with your family in this place, um, the moments that you get to have just to breathe in this place, what do you appreciate about, about your country? And what do you uh, want people to know about your country? One of the things, and, and, and sometimes it, it, is, it is a hard part of a hard part of it because sometimes it is linked to the uh, to not be to not having a big economy or or it's the fact that we're small. Yeah, we are a small country. Uh, we have to become a little bit more global, maybe, in, in, especially in, in in some industries. And but at the same time, the fact that we're so small and that we're a small country and, and small small cities compared. To, to, to big to, to big uh, to big cities you know, comparing Lisbon to London or to Paris or Madrid uh, one of the best things is uh, I wake up in the morning I took my I take my kids to school takes me 10 to 15 minutes not even after that I go to work takes me 10, 10 to 15 minutes not more, not uh, and I'm working I spend all the day working then I can come I can I can uh, come back home go go pick up my kids and still play with them and the fact that that it's a small city gives me time to, to, to enjoy and to take the most out of my family. I've loved this. I mean, I could talk about rugby for forever and, and, and in my, and my adopted home. Um, but uh, a question that we ask all of our guests, Portugal, the simple life. Why? Uh, I think, I, I, first of all, the passion that every Portuguese uh, has it on his country. Uh, the, the appreciation that we have on, on welcoming everyone. And uh, I'm pretty sure Dylan that you felt welcomed right away. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's something that uh, we like to please. Um, and, and you can see that by the language, everyone speaks English. If they're not, they'll, they'll make an effort. Uh, a lot of people speak French. If they're not, they'll, they'll make an effort. Um, uh, so, so yeah, the, this is uh uh, while simple, and then and then uh, the fact that we're we're a small country, uh, we have everything, uh, we and and in good quality, so um, so so I think that's that that's the most important. It's just uh, uh, come here. Uh, I think we're not uh, presentious, uh, so we we are pretty chill, uh, and uh, I think that's why we're so uh, so simple. Yeah. Beautiful. I've loved this conversation. Gon Gonzalo, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you very much. That's a, that's a wrap. So thank you once again to our guests and thank you to all of you for listening. Please subscribe, share with your friends, give us a thumbs up and please leave a comment or a review. We always love to hear from you. Don't forget Portugal, the simple life also has a magazine. So download it. It's for free. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And as we say in Portugal, Cesar's bem-vindo. Welcome to the Simple Life.